Hello and welcome back to the Race Coordinator Race Configuration Tutorials. This is part four um, of the series. Um, we've gone all the way through the general and heat setup at this point. So if you're interested in any of those properties and what they do and what they mean, how to, you know, what to do with them, um, you're going to need to visit the previous tutorials. Um, just to, to, to recap, um, this tutorial is not going to set up any particular race. It's not even going to change typically most of the properties or show you a race, can, you know, do anything for the race configurations. But I am going through each property one at a time, talking about that property in as much detail as I can get into here quickly, um, including how that property interacts with any other properties um, and how you might use them um, to, to create your race configurations. This is a very high level tutorial and in future tutorials um, we'll talk about actual setting up of specific race formats um, and we'll even target specific properties for those race formats so we'll do excuse me in a, in a future tutorial we'll do a, a race that you know we'll set up different rotation rotation uh, races that use different rotation heat rotations um, and different group formats different scoring methods whatever um, but this tutorial is just to, excuse me just to talk about each individual property. So we left off with the heat view um, in the previous tutorial, which isn't actually a property, it's just a view you can always revisit to um, to see how your heat, heat rotations are going to look based on whatever your current configura whatever your configuration is. So um, we're gonna move on from that one and we're gonna, we're gonna leave the heat setup now and we're gonna go to the, the uh, scoring setup. Um, scoring setup refers to the overall race standings, not just the heat, but how to score the overall race. And I try to use the word score as much as I can because points and other things can get really confusing. Um, the first property in the overall scoring setup is the accumulate property. Um, it seems pretty simple. Um, typically, by default, it's on. Um, by default, you will accumulate the heat values into your final score. Um, so there's, um, as discussed in the previous tutorials, there's multiple ways to set up heat scoring. Um, and for the overall scoring, you have a choice of either accumulating every driver's heat scores or you can just take their best heat score. So by default, you accumulate them all. Um, however, if you uncheck this box, it will take only the best heat score that there is. Um, again, depending on the scoring method, will often determine how, whether or not you want to accumulate or not. Most races will accumulate, however, um, in something like a... Uh, if a race is set up such that the heats are scored by best lap time, for example, you may not want to accumulate those. You may just want to take the best lap time. Um, if you're doing a round robin where you're doing best lap time, maybe you want to accumulate them so you'll get the best lap time accumulated for each of the lanes, and then the lowest time will be the best, you know. But um, you may also want to do that same race um, in which you just take the best lap they got on any one of the lap, on any one of the lanes across the different heats that they had to run to, to be on those lanes. It's completely up to you how you do it, what you want to do. Um, the default, again, is to accumulate those um, the heat scores. Um, points is another property for Race Coordinator. Um, race Coordinator can be configured to convert the heat standings um, into an F1 style scoring system. So what you can do is rather than um, just take the best time, if that's how you're ranking your score, or total lap, or laps for the, for the heats, um, accumulated or not, you can actually take the heat ranking um, at an individual level and assign points to them. So if you, by default this is turned off, but if you check this box, which I'll do just so that it, it turns on, on the very next screen there are a series of other properties that you can set. Um, in fact, there are five of them. Um, the main one is the heat, uh, the heat points, which is a list of integer values um, that specify um, how many points to assign each driver based on their position in the heat. Now, if you have a four-lane track, you only need four values. If you've got a two-lane track, you only need two. Um, this shows something like 18 or so values. I mean, I don't know anybody that's got an 18-lane track, but there they are. Um, you can use negative numbers. So, for example, let's say you wanted a four-lane track. You could assign... Um, oh, and these start out, so the 20, obviously... Well, not so obviously, maybe, but... The first value in here represents the winner of the heat. Second value is second place in the heat. Third is th third value is third, etc., etc. If you if you have a four lane track and only a, supply one number, um, any no, any lanes that don't have an actual number in this list will just get zero points. Um, so it will default to zero. But typically you're going to want to specify how many points you get per 
um, per lane. So in this case, let's say we had a four lane track and we wanted to be somewhat harsh about it. We're going to give um, 10 to first, 7 to second, 5 to third, but we're going to give negative 1 because like, I, wanted to, I want to emphasize here that you can do negatives. We're going to give negative 1 to the, t to the person who loses. And I just made these numbers up. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm sure there are fairly standard number sets that you can use. Um, something you want to consider when you're assigning the point values is that you're going to want to uh, sort of manipulate them in a way that, like, you know, two second places is equivalent to a first and a third or something like that. In this case, I didn't. Two second places would get you 14 points. Um, a first and a third would get you 15. Is that how you want it? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. It's, you know, you got to think about how you want to set those up. If you're using the points, I suspect you already have. Um, but again, if on a four-lane track, if I only specified three values, um, the fourth place finisher would automatically get zero. Um, it would be the equivalent of typing in typing it in this way and saying zero like that. Um, I recommend explicitly saying, you know, specifying each point value so it's clear, um, but again, you don't have to. The rest of the properties um, influence other things that you can do with the point system. So the first one we're going to talk about is the carryover percentage, um, carryover PCT property. Um, what this is, is it is the percentage of your heat score to add to the point total. Um, the simplest example I can give you, you can do this with timing stuff like best time and total time and whatnot, but the easiest way I can explain this is to do lap count. So if your heat is scored by lap count, if you got 20 laps and you set this value to um, uh, 100, uh, meaning 100%, um, what will happen is it will take that 20 laps you got, multiply it by 100%, which is 20, and then add that 20 to whatever position in the heat you came in. So if you came in first, you get 20 plus 10, which is 30. That would be your score for, for that heat in, in terms of the overall standings. If you do something like 50%, our same example, if you, got, if you came in first in the heat, got 20 laps, 20 times 50% is only 10, so you get 10 for the, for the carryover, plus 10 for being in first place, so you get 20 points for that heat. Um, in terms of your overall score. Again, things like the accumulate property here um, take effect, so if you're accumulating, you'll accumulate whatever your point score was um, for each heat. If you're not, it'll take whatever point total you got in each heat and take only the best one. Um, most places, again, I think especially if you're using points, you're going to be accumulating, but again, you don't have to. Um, moving on here a little bit, there's still some more properties to talk about for the point system. Um, you can assign a fastest lap bonus. You can give your you can give the the, per, the driver in the heat who got the fastest lap um, any number of points you want. Same thing with the fa um, I'm sorry that's the fastest overall lap. So so fastest lap bonus is for the whole race. Um, you can give whoever gets the fastest lap in the entire race you can give X amount of points. Um, same thing with fastest heat lap bonus in every single heat the driver that got the fastest lap in that heat can be given X amount of points. And the same thing again, fastest lane bonus would be overall for the entire race, Every whichever driver got the fastest lap in a particular lane would get this bonus. So the same driver could get this bonus on a four lane track, he could get it four times um, if he had the fastest lap on every single lane. Um, so you can start to get huge bonus points if you start playing with those and adding those in as, as things to do. Um, we're running out of time here. I think I have time to do a step up, and we'll do that one. Um, step up race can be used in conjunction with all of these things as well. Um, step up race, it's here, although it will also affect the heat rotations. And what a step up race is, is it's a race in which um, the drivers are organized by seed. The lowest seeds start in the first heat, in the early heats. And the winner of the heat sequence, you know what? I'm not going to have time to talk about this. Um, yeah, I'm going to start this up in the next in the next tutorial because this is a really complicated race format and it needs some time and I don't want to have to rush it in about 30 seconds. So stay tuned. We'll talk about uh, step-up races in the next uh, uh, race coordinator race configuration tutorial.